morning. You remember Archie Bunker? He often found himself at odds with his meathead son-in-law, Mike. In one episode, Archie and his wife were having a discussion about God. When Mike interrupts with the question, what God? Archie is about to answer Mike when his daughter Gloria chimes in, yes, what God? Archie can't believe he's here, his own daughter. He knew his son-in-law was an atheist, but he could not believe his daughter said such a thing. He looks at her and said, you weren't brought up that way, young lady. In which Gloria responds, I know, Daddy, but we just don't see any evidence of God. Well, I want to share with you today a few evidences that you would not expect to look in. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1. Paul and Silas and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Is God your Father? Just meditate on that a bit, that the God of all the universe, this is our message, God our Father. I, I pray that you have evidences in your heart to give you assurance that there is a God, He's a loving and good God, and I don't know what kind of earthly father you have, but we're talking about God our Father. And it's interesting, it uses this expression, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's going to use it again, Grace, it's interesting that word chariz, where we get charismatic or charisma. That's the word there in the Greek for grace, chariz, grace to you. And let me just read this. I looked up that word there, grace, and it's joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, and loveliness is what that brings to your life. I want to encourage you, that is a word in the Bible that sums up all God's love for you. It brings you grace. And grace covers a multitude of sins. Grace is what you can cling to. And on your darkest day, your, your house could be totally washed away. But I believe you can look up and say, Father, thank you for your grace. And I pray that you're latching a hold of that. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to prayer and pray with me. Now, um, prayer is a powerful thing that brings the things of God down into your life. You open yourself up a prayer. It's a submissive thing. We come to God, and it's the prayer of agreement. If you're sitting here today, and just another Sunday, you got up out of the same old bed and got in, had the same old breakfast in the same old car and came to the same uh, old church, and they're telling me to do something back there. You want me to? Move that mic up. All right. If, and if, but prayer has the power of, of linking you in. And see, but now see, we can, every person in here except for one can enter into prayer and receive a blessing. But if you're sitting there, if you're thinking, well, this is another um, HBO movie I'm going to watch. No, no, no. This is not what this is about. You become a participator. How many of you will agree with me in prayer? Father, right now we join our hearts in faith. We come before you because we are destitute, we are poor, we are powerless in the face of storms. Our goodness is un, has not the power, Lord, to bring us to you, but we come to you, Father in heaven, because you're gracious, forgiving. We seek your face, Lord. We join our hearts together, Lord, that you would minister and release your power into our hearts today. Shake us, Lord. Wake us up. Stir us from our graves, Lord. Give us life. Heal our sicknesses, Lord. Touch our hurts and comfort us, Lord. Our confusion. Give us something to hold on to, Lord. Evidence of your reality. We give you all the glory. And in Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Woo <laughs> Amen. All right, let's go on down to verse 3. We, and I, let me, I, I say, tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them what you told them. I want to encourage you today that in the midst of your life, you are going to experience things, and God is very well aware of that. And part of a growing process, part of life on this earth is, is trouble. It's, it's, it's encountering things that you do not like. It's suffering. And I want to let you know that that is a part and parcel of the Christian walk. In fact, 
It says you were called for this purpose. What purpose? That you would join with Christ in suffering and do it with class, to handle it with, with style, that it won't wipe you out. In fact, it'll be like the wing underneath the eagle. It will not bring you down, but it, to a certain degree, it's going to take you up above the storms. This is what the message of Christ is all about. And I want you to lock into this so when it happens, these things will not hinder you, but you will see them taking place and it will be evidences of that there is a God, he has a plan, and this is part of his plan. Okay? That's what we're, I'm trying to communicate. Verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren. It was just wonderful. We had the revival Wednesday night, and we were having just the, you know, we got up out of that bed and into that car and so forth and so on. And right at the end, Donnie said, I want to everyone to come down and just express your gratefulness. Now, that was just, there was a powerful thing released that maybe 10, 20 of you came down and talked to Brother Bill and myself and just express your gratefulness. I want you to see that so many times if you will exercise faith in this area that God asks you to praise, worship, thanksgiving, and focus in on the positive things. In fact, I want to put a banner up here for myself. I believe there's truth in the word that has to be expounded. But I don't want no, 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 no negative coming out. And I want to encourage you, one of your battles is to eliminate negative thinking and embrace positive Oh, but my house has got all washed out. You know, I want to give you one illustration about that. When I was in the ninth grade, I came home from school one fall day, and it was just a week before homecoming. I had just got a brand new suit that I was going to wear with one of my brother, my brother's girlfriend at homecoming. You know how somebody marches the girl out because the guy's in uniform? Well, we were coming home from school, and we got to my dad's cash register business they said go directly home your house has been caught on fire we were driving home and we could see pillows of smoke on 291 as we got on east north street oh no right our house was guttered by fire that new suit was gone oh no no for the next two months i lived downtown in the hotel greenville hallelujah all the guys wanted to come home with me on the weekends they came in and changed my bedding every day they came into our house and they took every bit of uh, the sheetrock on like 80% of the house. We had brand new carpet. They extended the stairs coming downstairs. We, everything was painted and pretty. I want to tell you, it was like a dollhouse after that. Now, I'm not going to tell you that every problem that you have will have immediate results, but God promises you that when you have problems and respond correctly, he brings forth all the riches of it. According to his riches and glory, he'll meet your situation. And many times we miss that because we don't exercise faith. All right. Gratefulness. Because your faith grows exceedingly. Now, if you have your Bible, turn to 1 Timothy 6.12. I want to give you a little bit of insight into this. It's not on the screen, so just hang with me back here in the media room. You guys do so good. 1 Timothy 6.12. You got that written down? Let me, let me come down there and see. No, I'm just <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. I want to encourage you that what I'm sharing with you today takes a certain degree of intentional warfare on your part. If you're sitting there today and you have doubts about God, guess whose problem that is? That's your problem. If you don't lay hold, uh, let me tell you, that sun coming through that window right there, that's enough to energize me. And that's only one of a billion things. And let me tell you, I fight that fact. In fact, I'm almost tempted to go out there and stand in that sun and make you wait here a few 30 seconds to let you understand that you need to go get it. Amen? Amen. And when we talk about God's goodness, I want to let you know, I am convinced, that, and I want to tell you, I saw Dorothy almost coming down the aisle today, hallelujah, because I saw Earl drive up and he parked over there, and I thought, uh-oh, Miss Dorothy didn't make it. I want to let you know there's a testimony of perseverance. How many know it would be easy to give up and quit? And I ain't sure I ain't going back for a hip surgery when I just had a knee one, hello? How many of the devil say, that won't work either? It's a fight 
This is a fight, the good fight. And I want to let you know how many people have got right to the edge of victory and quit. I believe that many people that should be in here today, they're at home today and they quit. They stop fighting the fight because God has so ordained the fellowship of Christians is where you come and you get your battery recharged. And you may not think that you need other people today, but you'll come to a point where this battle requires a team. And just like Donnie was talking about, I'm going to assure you, Donnie, Earl, Bob, and Robert, and I don't play golf because we think we're good. <laughs> but let me tell you, when we want to hit that ball 200 yards, we don't carry a little wedge out there. We get the big ammunition. And God get, has given you weapons of your warfare which are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And when you realize, when, there's nothing that lights my fire when I think, when I'm having some situation, a toothache or something, and all of a sudden it dawns on me, this just might be the devil bothering me. Now, I'm all fair and square with the course of life and in taking my fair share of pain, but he cannot put nothing on me, amen? And just like when we were playing football, I, don't, I never could learn all the offensive plays. But I found out very quickly at outside linebacker, I came back here and I was trying to watch what was going on, if anybody came and wanted to push me one way, guess what? It was my duty and job to go the other way. Grab that guy, bump him out of the way. And I want to encourage you, you need to engage the enemy and discern what is from the enemy. And when you sense the enemy is dealing with you, you need to take him. And soon the God of peace will crush Satan underneath your foot. How many know you got to get it up and down on him if you're going to? And this is the reason I feel like many times Christians have become so passive, they just take everything, well, I'm supposed to just lay down and die. No! Fight this fight of faith. And I want to encourage you, I believe our, there's many of you, I have seen and witnessed that your faith has increased. It's powerful. Your faith grows exceedingly there in verse 3, and the love of every one of you abounds towards one another. Turn in your Bibles to Galatians 6. Two, I had the fun time of being with four or so of my siblings. And my brother said, if I was going to preach any sermon, this is the sermon I would preach. Galatians 6.2, and I may go to work on it. Bear one another's burdens. I want to tell you, I believe that the core of this fellowship is powerful. One thing, we have deep pockets. In fact, it's kind of sad because I, when I'm looking for express situations where I could help. They had some children come to our house Friday, and they said, we're going to take some water and a list of things that we have to those who are in need in Columbia. And I went right to my car. I keep a big old thing of that um, nice water bottles behind me. took that big bottle. I took one more just so I had one in my car and took it to them. I believe that the resources of us as a body of believers is big. And God wants that to continue to grow where our love for one another just keeps getting bigger and better and more wonderful, powerful, and especially in light of this sermon here today. Your love towards one another abounds so, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God. I want to I give you a shout out. There are many pastors I talk to and they say, you, you tell you what, you got, a, you got the best. They say, let me know if you decide to leave Bethlehem, I want to apply. It, you, this is a wonderful group of believers, amen, among the churches of God. And here's what they're thanking God for. For your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Now, I, I would, should, could camp out there. Do you, get under, do you understand that you have to be patient and endure? Raise your hand. All right, let's try this again. You know I'm the only thing in between you and lunch. Do you know that, <laughs> do you know you need patience and endurance to get through? Uh, that's much better. <laughs> Amen. That your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Verse 5. Now, one of the things we're going to go through the entire chapter of verse, uh, chapter 1 of 2 Thessalonians. When you leave today, one of the keys for you to do this is to have information about it. When you go out, take that read the Bible through plan 
and you could check out 2 Thess Thessalonians chapter 1 because we're going to read the whole thing. Verse 5, this which is the manifested or plain. Do you know God's not trying to trick you? Now, God operates this entire world under a, a principle of faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now, there's a great wonderful study for you to, to seek and see why God does that. It's powerful. When you lay a hold of that thing, you'll become much more intentional about trying to understand the things of God, which is manifest or plain evidence of the righteous judgment of God. I believe that God, to a certain degree, is allowing and has prophesied and has allowed the earth to have its natural course to its natural disintegration of moral and cultural and economy and governmental norms on earth for one reason, he wants, that throughout eternity, he'll be able to look back and say, you can do it any way you want to, but let me show you. If you don't do it my way, this is what takes place. You can learn a lot by watching people, the outcome of their diets, their exercises, their diligence, their careers. Amen? And I don't know about you, I learn a lot from the way people do things good, but I tell you what sometimes burns into my mind when I see somebody and I say, that's, I do not want that to happen to me. And I believe that's one of the things which this is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for what you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, verse 7, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. And let me encourage you, there is going to be the great return of Jesus Christ, but God explicitly wants to reveal himself to you today, and when that revelation, every time that revelation comes, it brings you rest, it brings you help, it brings you victory, it brings you the power, and especially when you're going through tough times, is this necessary? If you'll lock on to it. Since this is, uh, let me see here, okay. <laughs> In flaming, let me go back to verse 7. And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. And flaming, I want to let you know this is New Testament truth right here. This, this is not just Old Testament, Old Testament where God was pretty rough on the wicked. God has a distinct plan, and if you'll follow this good, if you don't, flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not God. I was going to trick you and ask you, do you know I don't know God as good as I should? Think about this. All my problems are related to me. Every problem that I have in my life is because I don't know God like I should. How many know you don't know God like you should? How many know God has put together a powerful book and he has proclaimed that by the foolishness of preaching, faith is generated in the heart of the human heart? I want to let you know this is a powerful plan to know God. And God wants you to know him better. And there is judgment on every person that neglects seeking the knowledge of God. Now, this is your personal responsibility to get to know God. When, when you first wake up in the morning until you lay your head on your pillow, your last thought should be, Lord, I just lay my head down to sleep here. Keep me safe. Amen. Speak to me by dreams and visions. Every person that doesn't do this in flaming fire, taking vengeance of those who do not God, know God and those who do know him, but who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in in his saints you remember our song Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary help me pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary.
sanctuary for you. It's sort of an anthem for us. God wants to live inside your life. He wants to look out your eyes and think with your brain and reach out with your hands, glorified in you. Now think about this. God Almighty, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Creator, has this desire to release Himself. And I am convinced, I believe I can stand on the Word, the only way God has set up on planet Earth to get in and to affect the things of planet Earth is through a human being. I believe that when you get to heaven, there will be no ground on which you and I can stand on. I think God has taken every thorough detail to make sure that no one can point a finger to him and say, you're unfair. Now, I don't know if there are so many things I don't understand. Like, for instance, maybe there is a DNA uh, thing that takes place in someone's life that makes them evil, drunkenness. Or maybe there's a mental disorder that makes someone evil in their actions and changes their lifestyle. I don't know. But I can let you know that there will be no one that stands before God in his righteous judgment upon every person. And I want to make this very clear that it's because you, it, the, the big failure in the earth is not sinners. The big failure in earth is God's children who don't live it out. Me, God's children, he lives inside of me. I'm his sanctuary, and yet many times I don't follow through with this, that he would be glorified in his saints to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony of you was believed. Verse 11, therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith faith because you have fought the fight of faith you have laid hold of faith and with power verse 12 that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ father I thank you for your goodness I thank you that when these when every one of us leaves here today that your spirit is right there dwelling with us it's guiding and leading and empowering us. Lord, I just pray that every one of us, like never before, would open ourselves up to you to understand what lies ahead, what's been prophesied, what is considered to be revelation of the last days, exactly how we need to take a stand and not deny you in the day of our testing, Lord, to stay strong and grow in our faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come, Donnie and Pam and Jeannie.